in today's show. I'm here live on YouTube, ready to chat with you blokes and girls and whoever's around, whatever questions you've got about fantasy basketball. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We are two and a half weeks away. From the end of the NBA regular season, yes, this show continues to go all the way through the regular season. And to be fair, it goes all through the off-season as well. Probably fewer shows, not three a day. We'll do do a one a day and some of them will be pre-recorded stuff as I go on holiday myself. But there's still always going to be shows. So if you could always stick around and watch those, hey, that actually helps me out a lot as well. I'm here live on YouTube, ready to see what questions you guys have um, you guys have got for me. Let's see. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right. Keith says, Josh was right. Need to end the fantasy season two weeks ago. Half my players sit every other game, can't afford zeros. I think two weeks, Keith, is probably a little bit early. My recommendation was to sit, start, uh, sorry, to finish on Sunday, so the 20th. And you would have copped a little bit at the last week of the finals. But obviously, this week, things are going all right. We've got Malcolm Brogdon resting every game. We've got Giannis and Middleton sitting out. You do have the miraculous return of Chris Paul. But uh, Josh Hart's resting. Just so much bullshit going on across the league. It's only going to get worse. And again, if you are one of those people, so what's wrong with going to the end of the regular season? Just remember what happens in these next two weeks. Then you will get that idea and the question answers itself you will get that idea of why it is bad to continue to play through to the end of the regular season. Stephen Roman says, you guys think Chris Paul's really playing tonight? Yep, he is playing. That's why he is like, he's not only, you know, questionable or probable, he is in, he's playing. So yes, that is uh, that is happening. I don't want to drop AO too early, especially with DeRozan sitting out tonight. Um, then don't drop AO. Have you got someone worse? If you don't have someone worse, then Chris Paul over AO is a pretty easy decision. But because Dasunmu plays today, yeah, he would be worth holding, but look who else you've got. Look at the rest of the week. Is there anyone you've got on your roster that plays one more game in the next four days? A Magic player, a Celtics player, a Kings player, a Spurs player, a Clippers player? Any of those guys that play one game? Maybe you want to drop one of those guys. Have a look. Um, uh, Sinkos says, yeah, when do most leagues end? Most of them end this coming Sunday. As I said, I suggested to end most on the 20th. Actually, no, most don't end on the 27th. Most end on the 3rd, which is going to be disgustingly bad as well. Um, A lot end on the 27th. Some should have ended on the 20th, and hopefully you guys do. I'm still in one of my leagues now that's that's going now. We're in the final matchup at the moment. Can I explain the dud of the night sound drop? Just go into YouTube after you watch this video and just type in man's not hot, and you'll see the video. Big Shaq, man's not hot. That's what the video is. Do you play Chris Paul tonight? You're fearing minutes restriction? I'm not worried about minutes restriction. He might not play 34. He might play 27. It's a tough game. It's against Denver. It's not a lower body injury. I think he'll be fine. And it's Chris Paul. I think I'd roll him out there in a, in a situation like this. Paul George, will he do a Chris Paul and play next week? Maybe. He's getting back into practice. He still hasn't done contact work yet. His injury was more significant than what Paul George's was. It's obviously taken him you know, three months to get to this spot. I think there is a small chance he returns next week. I would expect if he does return, it's the week after that. But it's trending in the right direction at this point. Any general advice for Roto players as the number of starts begin winding down? You've got to be really cautious about who you're using. So, you know, streaming in Roto is not the greatest idea at this time of year. You're going to go wrong on a lot of different scenarios. Try to avoid, if you are in a real squeeze for games played, even if it's one of your best six or seven players, avoid maybe a blowout situation where maybe they play 26 minutes instead of 33 minutes if you're trying to preserve games played. Um, 
But the other thing to watch for with that is that you might say, well, I'll sit him here because in the next game, he'll play his 33 and then some fake injuries happen towards the end of the season and he left short. So be aware of how many you've got left, how many games that player who normally occupies that slot has got left. Is there any risk of them sitting a couple of games down the stretch? Um, and then in that last the three or four days of the season, if you do end up in a shortfall, then you can stream in to fill in those spots. Is campaign a drop with Chris Paul back? I, I think he will be. Um, just think the beginning of the season, Cameron Payne wasn't a 12-team league guy when Chris Paul was healthy. So it's hard for me to suggest that Payne is going to re retain that value. But they play today. Only you know, 10 teams played today. There's only five games on today. So if you can avoid dropping Cameron Payne today, using whatever happens with him today, maybe eight and five, that's still eight and five that it doesn't require you to use an ad to get someone in. After today, then sure, I, I think he's going to be a drop. But I, I would like to, in a lot of cases, I would like to hold for today, just because again, it's just it's just a game. Why is Michael Malone, Dr. Michael Malone? Well, there was a time a few years ago when Nikola Jokic was injured and um, he was cleared. The team passed him as active. He was available to play and Malone didn't play him at all. And at the end of the game, someone asked him, Jokic was healthy and available to play. Why didn't you play him? And he said something along the lines, yeah, I know the medical staff, paraphrase, I know the medical staff cleared him but I looked in his eyes and I could tell that he wasn't healthy or something along those lines. I went, oh, thanks, thanks, doctor. Thanks for your medical degree there. After they pass him fit, your look in his eyes was the one that told you he wasn't ready to go. So that's why I call him Dr. Michael Malone. It was something along those lines. Is Fox a drop? He got one more game this week, Lucas from Foxy. Um, I honestly don't think he plays it. I don't think he plays again this season. It's a risky move especially if your league goes into next week with four games for the Kings. And if he plays, I highly doubt that he does play those games, but I've got no um, concrete evidence to suggest that multiple Kings beat reporters have suggested that this will be the case without saying that it's definitely happening. Um, and again, you've got one game now in four nights for the Kings for this week. And I really don't think he plays in it, but that could obviously go completely tits up and you could be just out with a guy who's been playing really, really well. Dylan, you're in the first week of your playoffs. Sounds like a you problem, mate. Actually, it's, it's it's a you problem and the rest of your league problem. It's shit house. It's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad. But at least you get to watch my show for a couple more weeks. I think that's a good thing, surely, for both of us. Um, what do you do? Oh, I've talked about campaign a million times. We don't need to go into campaign, campaign, campaign every time. Tyus Jones or DeAnthony Melton? That's a good question. I think they're both um, they're both really, really op good options today. Morant's out again, which is what we thought would happen a few days ago, that he'd miss both of these with the um, with the way that they were responding to it. And then yesterday, he was all jumping around, happy on the sidelines. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, do I like Jones or Melton? I will probably take Jones there just for more minutes upside. Hey, Josh, is Billy Hernan Gomez worth the pick up for points and rebounds? I'm not sure what effect Nance will have on Hayes and Billy. Also, Billy's best pick up for points. He's a good points and rebounds guy, but there is a chance that he literally doesn't play. And they go with Nance, Hayes, and Valanciunas in that front court, especially if Ingram is back. Now, if Ingram is out, which it appears that he will be, I think he's he's listed doubtful, um, then there is still some minutes there for Bill, but his, his role is very insecure, Hernan Gomez, and that obviously leads to... Um, Leads to concerns with risking an add on someone like that. But he is a good points and rebounds guy. Yes, that is true. But it's now time for me to tell you that college basketball, the tournament's going. Is your alma mater still going? How are they, how are they looking in that tournament? You going all right? For all the latest odds, contests, and player props, though, betonline.net is definitely going all right. It is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. It's the best spot for all sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. Let's go to betonline.net and have a look at some of the latest odds surrounding the tournament. If my screen would um open up and I could tell you about my ill-informed betting choices for college basketball as, as my screen just dies on me. That's awesome. All right, so what have we got today? I can see that we've got um, yeah the 24th. Yeah, Texas Tech. and oh, That game's already started. No, North Carolina, UCLA. I did that one yesterday. St. Peter's and Purdue. St. Peter's, the giant killer. 12.5 point underdogs against Purdue. Surely they can't get it done again. Do they keep it within 12.5? No, nah, I'm going to say Purdue spanks them. 
Uh, Purdue minus 12 and a half and you can get all that over on bet online it's a continued source for all of your sports wagering information needs including live betting and favorite Vegas casino games so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action bet online is where the game starts let's get into the next bunch of questions that you guys have for me okay do I think Brogdon plays this week it's really hard to um, expect that he's rested three games in a row now who knows when he's going to be um, refreshed enough to play? I'm not tired. Look, it's obviously clearly um, bullshit with the resting. Um, they're clearly tanking and preserving him with injury, which I get it with the injury. Like, I get preserving that. But it makes it tough for us to be able to plan. Um, they play against Saturday, so he's already out Thursday. I think there's a risk he doesn't play on Saturday. I would be... I would absolutely be okay with moving on because it's just going to... It's it's not like he's just tired now. It's going to be... Bullshit's going to continue all the way through. Um, did I play fantasy basketball in the early 2000s? I did not. Late 2000s. Yes. If you were starting a new dynasty league this offseason, where would you take Cade Cunningham starting from scratch? In the top 10 pretty easily. I, I don't have a list in front of me of which order I'd go in, but he's in the top 10. Um, I, I would have taken him top 12 before this season. So yeah, he's definitely in the top 10. Do I think Goga will play tonight? He's questionable, isn't he? Um, they have got Goga questionable, Tyrese questionable. I think Halliburton might rest, but Brogdon, Duarte, and Jackson are out. I just, I, I do think Goga will play just because they don't have... Oh, oh I don't know. Oh, that's tough, actually. Now, now I'm backing off on that. Goga out is my pick. Um, just because Jalen Smith's off the injury report, so they might start him. They'll go the Red Rooster in there a little bit as well. They've got O'Shea Brissett and... Goga's foot is continually coming up on the injury report as being sore. Will Wendell miss the next game? I've got no idea. Again, I don't know these things. Will he miss against the Kings? I think there's a decent chance, but it's, last game was also a back-to-back. They do tend to sit him in some of the games against the bad teams, but they played him against the Thunder two games ago. I would guess hmm, they've got a game against the Kings, then the Cavs, then the Wizards. I think he sits one of the next three. Whether I, 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 I think he'll play Saturday and then probably sit that next Wednesday would be my guess. But that is just a guess. Is Marvin Bagley a drop or a hold? It's a tough one with Bagley because when Grant plays, it's hard to keep him. But I don't think Grant's going to play every one of these games. I think he's going to sit a whole bunch of them. In fact, I think there's a real chance that Jeremy Grant sits this game on Friday against the Wizards. And that means Bagley will have some value. They play again against the Thunder. They've got a game against the Pacers. And I think he's going to sit at least one or two of those ones. So I reckon at this point, I would probably hold on to Bagley just because um, the potential of him sitting out. Will Chris Dunn get a second? Did he get a second 10 day? Not that I've heard, but I'm pretty sure he will. Um, Halliburton is questionable for tonight, Josh. Okay. Is Terry Taylor a good stream option? Terry Taylor will be an okay stream option, but remember, there's still going to be Smith and Brissett who are going to be head, ahead of him, and then there is the chance that Goga does play. So I wouldn't say he's the best stream, but he's an, an he's one that's there for sure. Rashad Kareem says, does Winslow play tomorrow? I'd be really, really doubtful. It's the first of a back-to-back. He left last game with calf tightness. He's been dealing with Achilles soreness. They're tanking their ass off. I would be really surprised if Justice Winslow plays in that next game. Do I think Jar plays next game? It's just a guess. I would say yes for the next game, but I'm absolutely worried. And Ben Dover says, I'm sure that's your real name. Um, are you in favor of benching guys to win turnovers? Yeah, why wouldn't you? Like if you need to win turnovers, if that's the category that's going to decide your matchup, then sit them. There's absolutely no reason not to. In fact, you would be absolutely stupid to not do that. Is Bobby Portis a drop? Broski Bear, yes and no. Today, don't drop him. Absolutely not. There's no Giannis. There's no Middleton. So he's probably going to start next to Brook Lopez. After today, yeah, you probably do want to drop him, assuming Middleton and Giannis come back. But no way do you want to drop him today. Absolutely no chance. Is Harold a drop? Harold, welcome to the show for the first time. Good to have you here. I'm glad you found the show. How did you find the show? That's interesting that you're here and you found it so late in the season. Yes, Montrez Harold is a drop. He has been a drop for a bloody long time. Um, what teams are the best quality games for next week? That's a good question. So let's um, let's bring up the schedule. 
Let me just have a look at where that sits. All right, next week. Ooh, the Cavs have a five-game week next week. I would expect Garland to sit one or two of those. Who's got the most quality games? Well, in fact, it's the Chicago Bulls who play four games and all four of those on quality days. So they have... It's a very weird schedule next week, by the way. It's a very weird schedule. The Bulls have four. These teams, the Wolves, the Pelicans, and the Suns play three games, zero quality games. So if you're asking about your know, holding on to campaign, you might play him zero times next week. That's that's a problem. Like you worry about Devontae Graham or Jackson Hayes or these guys who are going to have value the rest of this week. Next week, it's a stinking schedule. Jared Vanderbilt, Bar, even maybe Pat Beverly for Minnesota. Like that's stinking. Teams like the Rockets and the Spurs have four games, but it's one quality game. So your Alperen Shangoons, your Devin Vassells, are they even worth it? So the Kings have four with one quality, but I reckon Davion probably pushes past that. So does Damian Jones. But Trey Lyles, Chemezi Metu, I don't know if it's worth it. It's a, Next, when I do my weekly preview show on the weekend, it's going to be really important to dig through that. But that is some stark, stark differences between teams. Like a Nets team plays three games, all qualities, versus those Wolves, Pelicans, and Suns that play zero. That is a massive difference when on the surface, it looks the same. Does Brandon Ingram play tonight? He is doubtful, so that's about a 10% chance of him playing. So I'm going to go ahead and say, no, he won't play. But what I am also going to go ahead and tell you is that NBA Top Shot is the officially licensed NFT of the NBA. You can connect with a community of hundreds of thousands of NBA fans. Hey, even I'm over there as well. I don't, can you search usernames? I think you can. I'm Josh Lloyd 48 over on NBA Top Shot. It's a great way to upgrade your experience as an NBA fan. It's the future of what being an NBA fan is about. It's sort of like trading cards, but instead of static pictures on a piece of cardboard, it's a little video clip that you store in your blockchain over on NBA Top Shop. Also like the stock market, prices rise, prices fall. Get ahead of it, buy low, sell high. We know all about that in fantasy sports. The same sort of thing. Hey, someone's in a slump. Maybe you buy their moments at a cheaper price. They're blowing the roof off things. You sell them at a higher price. You invest in rookies that you think have long-term value. There's a whole bunch of things that are pushed together. NBA players are collecting them. You've got Michael Jordan and Kevin Durant investing in it. And people ask, you know, why would you bother uh, buying a highlight? We can just watch it on YouTube for free. Well, it's not just about watching that highlight because, yeah, you can go and do that. It's about investing. It's about having these things, about being part of that community and having that stock market-like feel which is obviously something that is very, very interesting. There's also the challenges as well to unlock exclusive moment NFT rewards. So complete the challenges to unlock exclusive moment NFTs and you can treat Top Shot like the best of daily fantasy sports. Okay, it's time. Can you believe it? We are here to talk about Built Bar and I have got Built Bars in my hand. You may have seen me post this on Instagram. You might have seen me post this over on Twitter, but I've got some. These in my hand are the Lemon Dipped Cheesecake Built Bar Puffs. I haven't had a puff before. So let's see how we go. Built Puffs, Lemon Cheesecake, live on air taste test of the best tasting protein bar ever. Because we know that protein bars taste like crap. And we know that candy bars are full of calories and sugar and they taste disgusting. So let's have a look at this big, big oh, there we go. Covered in, looks like white chocolate. These are 17 grams of protein in this little bar. Ready for some ASMR chewing? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, it's actually really good. I'm not normally... Mmm, Jesus. Mmm. I'm not normally a marshmallow guy, but that is good. So you can get yourself a box of Built Bars as well. Go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and save 15% off your order. Built Bar is built different. All right. Is Paddy Connaughton a good stream tonight? Yeah, he is. He's a great stream tonight. Um, excellent. No no Middleton, no uh, Giannis. Great stream. Best player for the Wizards for stocks. Mateo, I'm more interested in arse bounds. Don't say stocks. We've got to get away from saying stocks. It means nothing. Nothing at all. I could be losing steals by a million and winning blocks and then someone gets five stocks and it's five steals and zero blocks and it means nothing. Please get away from using that term. So, Mateo, with all due respect to you, I'm not going to answer that until you ask me, do you actually want steals or blocks? Or do you actually want both? Or are you just saying it because people have turned that into a term? Do I prefer two-week playoff matchups or one-week playoff matchups? 
two week is better. I agree with that. It, it is better. And it's hard to do though if you're running a six man three week or three round playoff because it's a long time. If you want to squeeze it and make it, hey, let's make it more competitive. Four team playoff, two weeks each. It's great. It evens out a lot of schedule stuff. Um, it can stop a lot of dicking around with unfair um, and unfair schedule imbalances and some injury stuff. It does. It is a lot better of a system. But if you're doing this three rounds, six weeks, it's a long time. Is OG a solid pickup for next week? The Jedi, OG and Anobi. But what about Scarf? OG. Blizzard, stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Yeah, look, I think he'll be back. So yes. Is Pat Williams a pickup? I honestly don't believe so. No. Best back-to-back -back stream, Eubanks or Shangoon? Uh, it's got to be Eubanks to me. Am I going to finish it? Yeah, I still want to chew the whole time during this show. I'll have another bite. So I can talk with my mouth full. If Willie, if Willie, if Billy is volatile, is unsecure, insecure playing time, who would I recommend for points and rebounds the rest of this week? Well, he is still a really good option for the rest of the week because he's four, uh, three games left for the Pelicans. And that obviously you know has, has value. If I have a look, I'm just looking to see who else might be around, who might be able to provide points and rebounds value for the rest of the week. Uh, who's on the wire? Let me just have a quick look. It's, it probably is going to be him, but there is a ton of uncertainty around it. I think you can look at Corey Kispert as maybe a guy that gets 30, 40 points across these three games. Like, there's value in that. Like, the rebounding won't be as high, obviously. Um, Hachimura is a points and rebounds guy whose role is way more secure, especially with Kuzma out. So maybe someone like that, if he's available. Um, even on a, probably not Dwight Powell, but he's been playing well. But they're probably your options there. Yeah, Kispert, Hachimura, uh, maybe Avdia as well. And then Billy, but again, it is risky. He might not play all three games, especially if Ingram does return. That would be my worry. Elite Panda, I've talked about Chris uh, campaign a, a million times. Just go back and watch the start of the show again. Emre says, between Rui, Avdia, Kispert, and Gafford, who do you think will have the best overall game? What does best overall game mean? It doesn't mean anything in fantasy. Again, get this out of your head. I can't like stress this enough. We have four days left in this matchup. You shouldn't be caring about best overall matchup. Like I'm looking at my matchup and going, all right, it's going to come down to steals. It's going to come down to blocks and it's going to come down to threes. I think that's what my matchup is going to come down to. So I don't actually care about the other categories that much. I just want to see who I can get in for those particular ones. Rui is a points and rebounds guy. Avdia is a rebound steals and blocks sort of guy. Gafford is a blocks and field goal percentage and rebounds guy. Kispert is a points and threes guy. They're all wildly different doesn't matter who has the best overall game because it's probably going to be a bee's dick difference between these players. It's about what you actually need to win the week. How did you ship the built bars to Australia? It's a good question, Ryan. It cost a lot of money and I was so desperate to get them out here. Um, I had to go to like a, uh, a shipping company. Uh, there's a company called Ship It To where there's stuff that doesn't ship overseas. You can get it shipped to them and then they post it out to you. So I get it shipped to their address and they, add, they post it out to me. This, I ordered hundreds, not hundreds, I ordered uh, 11 boxes of Built Bars to get it all in one go. But I had to get it shipped to a, you know, whatever that intermediary shipping place who then sent it out to me because Built Bar wouldn't send it out to me directly. Great. What do I think about same day versus next day ads? Next day ads are stupid. I don't like them at all. I think they're completely pointless and they shouldn't exist. Josh, what are your plans for the off season? How do we get your daily Josh Lloyd fix? All right, well, I'm going to be doing shows through the off season. There'll be varying types of shows, some recap shows, some season review shows, some draft preview shows, a whole bunch of stuff like that. Do I have TikTok? Yes, there's no content on it, no. But I'm gonna be in France for a few weeks and there'll be stuff on my Instagram of me being in France, I'm sure. Um, maybe we're gonna record some vlogs while we're over there. So keep an eye out for those. They'll probably be on a separate channel, but we'll find out about that. But that's what the plans are. But I'll still be around doing videos on this on this channel for sure. Need to get money somehow. Um, two 0 lost to Japan, Josh. What happens, Al? I got no idea, mate. I didn't. Uh, I didn't watch. I was at the AFL last night, and that was a disappointing loss as well. Shout out to the bloke who recognised me in the crowd as I was walking out. Don't know. Who, I don't know what his name was, but uh, shout out to you if you are here watching. Unfortunately, you were a Carlton fan. Do I think Ananobi plays tonight? Will he be on a minutes restriction? Minutes restriction, no. Do I think he plays? I I do think he plays, yes. 
Um, I hate narcissistic commissioners. What's that in regard to? I'd like to know what the backstory of that is. Scars, I talked about this with Paul George already. Do I think he returns soon? Maybe. It is trending that way. I wouldn't say he's back this week. Potentially next week, but more likely the week after. Why do I call? Why do I call what? Is Killian Hayes a good ad for next week? Okay, let's have a look. What do the Pistons schedule look like? Where are they? Detroit? Why can't I bloody see them? Four games. Two qualities. Back-to-back Thursday, Friday. He's, okay. He's playing well. I don't trust Dwayne Casey, though. But look, the four games is appealing. Will he be in your best lineup on the busy day, the on the Friday? And the, oh, the Sunday is the busy day as well. That's a shit week to finish your playoffs as well. With one, two, three, four, five. With 13 games on the th- Sunday. It's a terrible way to finish the um, to finish your playoffs. So you probably wouldn't use him there. You might get two games out of him in the first six days of the week. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Any update on Ben Simmons? Well, the update was he has a herniated disc. And no, I don't expect him to play anytime soon. What's the main difference between Yahoo and ESPN? Yahoo's... um, ESPN, for example, has problems adding players to their database. They will not add players timely enough. Um, Yahoo, they will both have their, their issues for sure. Yahoo has some pretty weird systems in terms of the inability to drop players and set your next day's lineup. You have to wait until a certain time passes. I hate that system. ESPN doesn't, doesn't have that problem. Yahoo doesn't allow two-week playoff matchups. Yahoo doesn't have um, weekly limits that you can set for a matchup for a week. ESPN doesn't have an auto sit start feature. ESPN doesn't have, um, again, the, the adding the players is ridiculous into their um, into their database. It takes forever at times. Um, their UI is not as uh, impressive or as easy to use as Yahoo's. Not that Yahoo's is great, but that is, they're probably the major differences, I would say. Is Jose Alvarado a good stream for assists and steals? Yeah, look, he's, his value is going to be up and down for sure because we don't know what the minutes are going to be like. And if Ingram comes back, it does squish him. But with three games, you might get 60 minutes for one ad. You might get 10 to 14 assists. You might get four steals to five steals, which I think is not a bad combination. Armando says, what are you looking forward to during your trip in France? Getting back overseas, which I haven't done since 2019. That would be great. Um, eating food, relaxing. That's honestly just getting away, which I haven't been able to do. Obvious for you, obvious reasons and stuff. Um, Julius Randle shut down? No. He has a quad issue. Is he injured? Yes. Will he play again this season? We've got no idea. Who do I think is the best fantasy hoop analyst beside you? I don't think there's one. I don't even think I'm the best necessarily. I don't even know who how you would say the best. I think getting multiple opinions from people is important. So there's heaps of good ones. There's obviously the guys I work with, the basketball monster, Matt Smith and Kyle McEwen. And then you've got your Dan Bres- Besberis, Aaron Bruski, Adam King. Um, yeah, Mitch Casey over at Ball Boys does a great job. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to leave people out here. Um, Jared Johnson, Jonas Nader, Ryan Knauss, um, Matt Straup. Um, uh, there's heaps of them. There's heaps of really good... Yeah, Dr. A, of course. There's so many... And I'm missing a bunch of, of guys here. Mike A. Potria, um, Mike Catron. Uh, there's heaps. Uh, I wouldn't say one is, one, one is the best or anything along those lines. Um, drop Kyle Lowry for campaign. Uh, only if your league's the reverse league where you're trying to lose. That would be my suggestion there. Why would you drop Kyle Lowry for Cameron Payne? Are you all right? Okay, we're getting ready to wind this one up now. In fact, we might do it right now. Thanks, everyone, for being a part of the show. It's been awesome having you here again for another Mailbag Show. Got to eat the live Built Bar, which was sick. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, thumb it up. Leave your comments down below. Hey, one last thing. Yesterday, 
I was talking about the um, the tire company, Michelin, and about the Michelin Guide and how I was having this discussion with my partner. And people were like, yeah, nah, nah, Josh, you got to say it like you know, it's an American company. You got to say it like the American way. Like Michelin is not an American company. It's a French company. That is why I said it as Michelin. Because it is not, and it's, and it, multiple people said that. It's wild to me the way that we can not be brainwashed, but the way that we can just, I just assume Michelin's an American company. It's not. It's a French company. So that is why I would say Michelin, like Michelin for the Michelin guy, the Michelin stars, because it's a French company and that is how the name is pronounced. So I think I win the Michelin debate. It's, but I was just, it's crazy to me. People go, nah, it's, you got to say it that way because it's an American company. Multiple people. Just we have this in our head. That that's just what it is. But it isn't. There you go. Bit of trivia for you guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.